Almost 2-3 weeks ago I became very happy owner of an incredibly powerful GPU, powerful for 2017. I got it via eBay from USA Poland with a land lease for only $200 they sent me GTX 1080 with a turbine cooling system. At that time it was a good deal because this 1080 was the cheapest on eBay and not only because it had a turbine cooling system if someone else hasn't realized it yet, this card is used. Oh, and because it's the worst card with such cooling. And here is what I want to check and show you in this video. Is it possible taking into account all the wretchedness of this video card to configure it so that the temperature is up pleasant and the video card leaves a long time and doesn't cause feats of anger at its owner. And I haven't told you yet, I did a little research and found out that this card was a write-off from a Dell PC. Yes, this is the OEM version. MSI has the same one, but with a black textolite. I haven't figured out who buys the parts from whom, but first let me show you how I made it gold. The card itself is quite simple, if the person who serviced this card before me hadn't guessed to screw all the screws on the thread locker, it would have been much easier. Especially the backplate is screwed on tightly. Damn, why is it so difficult, after a long struggle I only managed to spend a lot of my nerves and strip one screw. I even wanted to file the screw down with a nail file until I realized that this is impossible. Damn screws. I still couldn't get one screw out. After I took off the blower cover and made sure that the GPU had been serviced no more than 6 months ago, I came to this conclusion because the GPU was almost clean and the thermal pads and the thermal paste were not dry. Then I tried to cut down the stripped screw again and decided to apply more radical methods to solve this problem. I just took it and drilled the damn screw out. What is this if not a victory? I didn't even break anything. There are strips on the copper base of the radiator that are too deep. Here, I hope you can see them clearly. I will sand them off with the sandpaper. Yes, the cooling system here is much worse than in the R9-290X, which has not just usual bar of aluminum with a copper core, but a real combustion chamber. Oh, I mean an evaporation chamber. It's a much more complex toy, but the consumption there is 250 watts against 180 in this card. Just look at my hands, as if I walked in mine. In fact, I polished the copper base. Just look. It still has some streaks after grinding, and my hands are in shit, but it's so smooth that even mirrors. As I already said, the thermal paste and thermal pads are in good condition. This is one of the reasons why I bought such an old video card from eBay, people there are just less likely to cheat each other. If you buy such a video card from the secondary market here, well, that's a bad idea, because the price of this video card is the same as the minimum monthly salary in Ukraine. And for an American, for example, this video card is 2 or 3 full working days. In short, where I bought this video card, people have less motivation to cheat each other. Next I removed the fan, which also doesn't stand out for its special quality compared to other parts of this GPU. I started taping those places that would remain untreated. By the way, this part is made of aluminum. They could have saved money on it and made, for example, black text to light, but they just added me some work. I even had to buy a normal knife, all for this damn part. I tried to make it as good as I could. I really tried to make it not as bad as I can. I prepared the plastic for painting, I hung up all the parts, even degreased them, and covered them with a plastic primer. Here is it, a can of gold paint. Now the GPU will go up in price a lot. So much better. I was supposed to stop at this point, but my love of making shit has always won. I decided to polish the paint without having any idea how to do it. At first I did everything well, sanded the part, even bought a sanding attachment and even bought a sanding paste. But I decided to grind with the grinder, angle grinder. Just look at what this primal man is doing.
The grinder has such high speed that it has ripped off all the paint. I will not make the same mistake next time, everything had to be repainted and the new paint was much worse than the previous one, but it's okay. Then I started to put everything together, the turbine, the radiator, the cowling, on which even the paint was not completely dry, it turns out that one day is not enough for complete drying, but I don't care anymore. But still, there are some things I care about. For example, the base of the radiator and the crystal of the GPU I degreased with alcohol and smear it not the cheapest thermal paste. I connected the fan. Guess the riddle. What I forgot to put on the radiator, not suspecting I started screwing the textolite to the radiator without realizing the trick. And then the backplate. I was still trying so hard to get the shot. Okay, come here, it's time for someone to get the ticket to the trash. Now we will see what you are made of. It's fucking thermal pads. I got so excited I forgot to put them. I remind you they are in good condition so I'm not going to change them. Now let me show you the maximum and minimum turbine noise this GPU can make. Unlike the R290X, whose turbine can reach an insane 5500 revolutions per minute, this GPU turbine spins up to 4000 at most. Yes, there is still a lot of noise, but no one uses the card in this mode. The card is not noisy because the manufacturer has configured it so the GPU burns, but not to make noise. After 80 degrees, the card decreases the frequency and voltage to avoid burning out. 82 degrees maximum at 54% of turbine speed. And now let me show you how to make sure that this card doesn't burn out early and lives a long and happy life. And the MSI Autoburner program will help me with this. And the procedure I will perform is called undervolting. Open the program and press Ctrl plus F. A graph opens up. The frequency is shown vertically and the voltage is horizontally. I think I need to say right away that I'm not going to take responsibility for the life of your video card if you follow my lead, so repeat at your own risk. Press Ctrl key, click on the topmost square with the mouse and drag it down. Now we find the square with the voltage we need, in my case it's 800, and drag one square up to the frequency we need, I chose 1690 MHz. Plus or minus 10 MHz will came out, I close the graph and click accept. If I open the graph again, the voltage frequency indicator will line up in such way that the card will operate at the maximum of 800 millivolts with a frequency of 1700 plus minus 10 megahertz. That's it. The card will be able to handle lower frequencies and voltages, but not higher ones. Now I take the memory clock slider and drag it to plus 800 megahertz. This is the maximum for my GPU. If you add more, then artifacts will appear. So now that I have overclocked the memory due to the fact that I don't know what its temperature is, because there is no memory temperature sensor, I changed the fan curve a little bit. From now it will work at 100% when the temperature reaches 80 degrees or above. This is what the stock fan speed curve looks like. Previously the maximum speed was at 90 degrees, the memory will start to heat up more after overclocking, so I will try to compensate these changes.
Now that we have the GPU configured, the memory plus 800 and the fan configured, we accept the settings. And here is what we have, on the left is what I've done and on the right is all stock, except for the fan settings. Here you should pay attention to the turbine speed and the temperature. On the left the speed and temperature are lower, and also due to the memory overclocking the FPS is higher but in practice in games and in somewhere else I think it will be same. As for the games, here is a gameplay recording of the old Fallout 4. Pay attention on the power consumption of the video cards on the left, where the undervolting card consumes a maximum of 100 or 110 watts, while the card in the stock consumes all 150-160 watts. And most importantly, temperature. The card has become much cooler. With the same speed of fan is 54%, the temperature on the left is 67 degrees and on the right is 82 degrees, it's 15 degrees difference. It's worth saying that the more powerful GPU is subjected to undervolting, the more profit you will get from it. For example, if my card wasn't 1080 but 1080 Ti, then I would not remove 50 watts from it, I would remove 70 or even more. This way, even a GPU with a very poor cooling system in every sense with the high power consumption can work on normal temperatures and not be noisy at the same time. And considering that such cards are often cheaper on the secondary market than those with normal cooling, I think this is a good deal for poor gamers. The main thing is to check the card before buying it. Goodbye. <laughs>